Okay, lesson 6.4, we're gonna be talking about inverse functions and how to prove that, uh, or verify that functions are inverses of one another. So the first thing is, you know, what exactly does it mean for a function to be an inverse function? Well, you can think about it as when you put x into your function, if you then put it into the inverse function, denoted by this f to the negative one, it'll take you back to that original quantity. It's kind of like if I take the number seven and I multiply by two, that's 14, and then I divide by two, I go back to seven. So multiplying and dividing are inverses, adding and subtracting are inverses, squaring, square rooting. You know, these are some examples of uh, simple inverse functions, but we're gonna be doing some more multi-step functions, and we're gonna show you how to calculate, you know, how to find the inverse function. But basically, this is what you would do to prove that functions are inverses. You would compose them like we were doing in the last le lesson, f of g of x, and if you get x, that tells you that they're undoing one another. You start with x, you put it into the function, you put it into the inverse function, and you come back to the original value. They're basically undoing one another. Same thing here, you wanna do g of f of x. You wanna compose it both forwards and backwards, like f of, x, f of g of x and g of f of x. But if you get x for both, that proves that the functions are undoing one another or they're inverses of each other. Let's look at an example. Say we have um, f of x equals two x minus one f of x is really like our output. We can think of this as like our y value. If we interchange the x and the y, if we interchange the input and the output, okay, and then we solve for this new y value, by adding one, we get x plus one equals two y. Divide everything by two, we get y equals one half x plus one half. Or you can write this as f inverse of x, with that minus one means inverse, equals one half x plus one half. Okay, so now, there's our original function, there's our inverse function. Let's go ahead and graph these just to see what they look like. So f of x equals two x minus one, so it has a y-intercept of negative one, it has a slope of two, so we're gonna go up two over one, up two uh, over one, okay? And so there's our, there's our line right, right there, okay? Now if we graph um, the inverse function, we've got a y-intercept of one half, which is right about there, and a slope of one half, which is uh, up one, uh, over two, right about there. Okay, so you can see now if I graph this line, try to do an accurate, accurate graph here for us, there's our inverse function, so inverse and original. But one thing that you'll notice about these graphs is that they're reflections, okay, over this dashed line, the line y equals x. So if you're looking at the inverse function and the original function, they're gonna be reflections over that 45 degree line, the line y equals x. But let's take it one step further. Let's show how you would prove or verify that these are inverses of each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do f of f inverse of x, okay? So I'm gonna take the inverse function, which is 1 half x plus 1 half. I'm gonna put it into the original function, our f function, okay? So whatever's here in parentheses goes in for x on the right. So that's gonna be two times 1 half x plus 1 half minus one. So if we distribute the two, we get x plus one minus one. These cancel and you get x. Now let's do it the other way. Let's do f inverse of f of x. So here we're taking our f function, which is two x minus one, and we're putting it into our inverse function. Okay, so whatever's in parentheses goes in for x on the right. So this is gonna be one half times two x minus one plus one half. So if we distribute, we get x minus one half plus one half, those cancel and we get x again. So you can see when you compose the functions, f of g of x, g of f of x, if you get x for both of those, that proves or verifies that they're inverses of one another and uh, you've, got, uh, you've proved that they're inverses. So that's the key. So the other thing we wanna talk about, want to learn Algebra 2? Check out my Learn Algebra 2 video course for sale where we go through 85 video lessons that take you step by step by step through Algebra 2. We go through the important formulas, concepts as well as numerous examples to help you master algebra 2. Click the interactive card or the link in the description below to go over and check out some of the free lessons. Otherwise, let's get back into this current lesson. So that's the key. So the other thing we want to talk about in this lesson, okay, is the horizontal line test versus the vertical line test. So the horizontal line test, well actually let's start with the vertical line test. The vertical line test, what you do is you draw these vertical lines like this. Okay. And what you want is you only want the vertical lines to cross the graph at most once. If it crosses the graph more than once, that means that the, uh, it's not a function, okay? The graph does not represent, represent a function. And the reason is, is because for every x value, you only want one y value, right? So if the graph looked like this, for example, 
and you drew a vertical line, you'd say, well, when x is 1, y could be positive 1 or y could be negative 1. So for that given x value, you have two y values. For that one input, you have more than one output. That's not a function. But the, what the horizontal line test does is we, we draw these horizontal lines like so. And again, we're looking to see that the horizontal lines don't cross the graph more than once. Because if they do, like you can see here, it means that the inverse of this graph is not a function. Okay, it's because you can see here for this given y value, right, there's two x values, right? So what that tells you is, is that when you uh, do the inverse, when you switch the x and the y, that means for a given x value, you're going to have two y values. So without having to uh, find the inverse function or graph the inverse function, which by the way, when you want to graph an inverse function, you know, you just reflect it over this line y equals x. So this parabola here that I drew is actually going to look like this now, okay, like that. It's just a reflection over that 45 degree line. And you see how it fails the vertical line test just like I showed you over here? So without having to do all those steps, the horizontal line test is a shortcut. Let me show you another example. Say if your graph looked like this. Okay, now does this one, uh, is this graph uh, a function? Yes, it passes the vertical line test. Is the inverse of this graph a function? Well, we're going to use the horizontal line test now. And you can see nowhere does it cross the graph more than once. So that means that the inverse of this graph would also be a function. So that's the horizontal line test in action. But let's jump into some examples here that you can practice on your own to get more experience with this and uh, get some practice and we'll go over them. So start with number one. It says find the inverse of f of x equals 3x to the fifth. Okay, so remember the, the process. f of x is really like y. That's our output. We interchange the x and the y. Wherever you see x, you put y, and wherever, vice versa, right? So x equals 3y to the fifth. Now I want to solve for the new y. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3, okay? And I want to just get y by itself. So I'm going to take the fifth root of both sides. So y equals the fifth root of x over 3. Now you could write this instead of y, you could write this as f inverse of x. That's your inverse notation. Okay, so you're with me so far? Switch x and y, solve for the new y. Okay, number two, we've got y equals 3x plus 6. Okay, so how would you find the inverse for this one? We switch the x and the y. We solve for the new y. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. And we want just y by itself, so I'm going to divide everything by 3. So you can see that the inverse function, okay, y equals... Uh, one third x minus two, and you got it. Now number three, let's try this one. Y equals four fifths x plus ten. Same process. You switch the x and the y. Solve for the new y. So I'm going to subtract ten from both sides. Uh, now I'm going to get the y by itself. Instead of uh, multiplying by four fifths, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, both sides by five fourths. If you distribute, that gives you 5 fourths x minus 50 fourths, which is 25 over 2, and that's your inverse function. So that's the key. Switch the x and the y, solve for the new y. Let me erase the whiteboard. I've got some more examples that you can practice uh, talking about uh, inverse functions. I'll be right back. Okay, number four, state, uh, show that the functions are inverses. So we've got a of x and b of x, and for number five, we have c of x and d of x. So how would you show that these functions are inverses? See if you can do that on your own. Well, remember, there's uh, two steps here. We have to compose the functions a of b of x and the other way, b of a of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the b function okay, into the a function. So this is going to be a of b of x, which is x minus 5 over 6. And here you can see that uh, when we put x minus 5 over, over 6 into our uh, a function, we get 6 times x minus 5 over 6, that's our new input or our x value, plus 5. The 6 is cancel. We have x minus 5 plus 5. The negative 5 and positive 5 cancel. We just get x. But what some students forget, you know, is to compose it the other direction as well. So you want to do it both ways, show it works both ways. So b of a of x, now we're taking our a function and we're putting it into our b function. So we're putting in 6x plus 5 in place of x in our b function. So that's going to be 6x plus 5 minus 5 all over 6. So the 5 and negative 5 cancel. 6x divided by 6 is x. So you can see we proved that you know we're getting back 
our original input, which is x. So that proves that they're inverses of one another. So try number five, same idea. C of x is two x squared minus one. D of x equals the square root of the quantity x plus one over two. Show or verify that those are inverses of each other. Well, again, what we wanna do is we wanna compose them. C of d of x, which means that we're putting in uh, d, our d function, which is the square root of x plus one over two in place of x. Okay, so that's squared minus one. So this is our new, uh, our new input. See, this is our new x value. And so now when we square our square root, those cancel. So we just end up with x plus one over two times two, the twos cancel. And then one minus negative one, those cancel, you just get x. But let's make sure we do it the other way as well. So d of c of x, so we're putting our c function, which is two x squared minus one, into our d function. Whatever's in parentheses goes in for x on the right. So that's gonna be, uh, let's see, two x squared minus one plus one, all divided by two, and then we take the square root of that. So negative one and positive one, those cancel. Twos cancel, we get the square root of x squared, which is equal to x, and you can see that we've got x for both of those that proves or verifies that they're inverses. So it's really just composition of functions. Just make sure you do it both ways. Now for number six, it says, is the uh, inverse of this function a function using the horizontal line test? So for number six and number seven, go ahead and graph these. Use your horizontal line test to see if the inverse of the function would be a function. You can, do your, you can use your graphing calculator if you want, but I'm gonna just show you. So this is gonna shift down to, I know three x cubed, well the three is um, stretching the graph by three times, and y equals x cubed is kind of like an S-shaped graph. We're gonna be talking about these graphs in the, in the next lesson. But you can, again, you can graph this on your graphing calculator, y equals three x cubed uh, minus two. And so this is gonna look something like this, okay? So now when we do the horizontal line test, we take these horizontal lines like so, and we see does it cross the, the graph you know, more than once. Well here it's crossing once, 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 once. So it never does it cross the graph more than once. So that means that the inverse of this graph is a function, we're gonna say yes. If you wanted to actually see what that graph looks like, just go ahead and draw that 45 degree line, the line y equals x, and reflect it over that line and you're gonna get you know, the inverse graph and you can do the vertical line test, but the horizontal line test is actually a shortcut. So for number seven, we've got g of x equals negative two x squared plus four. This one you're probably more familiar with. It's shifting up four, it's a parabola, x squared is a parabola, the negative two is stretching it and reflecting it. So it's gonna look something like this. Okay, now when we do the horizontal line test, See how it's crossing the graph at more than one point? This means it's failing the horizontal line test. That means the inverse of this function is not a function. So we're gonna say no. Okay, now for number eight, it says find the inverse and state the domain. Now this one's kind of an interesting problem. It's um, f of x equals three x squared minus five, but x has to be greater than or equal to zero. So let's just graph this for a moment. It's a parabola that's being shifted down five. So it's gonna look something like, like this. Okay, now you see how it says that x is greater than or equal to zero? That means that only when x is zero or to the right. So with zero or greater than zero. So that means we're looking at this branch of the graph, not this branch. So we should, let's just really erase this, okay? So we're not distracted here, okay? That's our graph. Now when we look at the range, the range is what the y values can be. See how y is greater than or equal to negative five? But what's interesting with uh, inverse functions is that because you're switching the x and the y value, the domain and the range also are gonna switch. So that means that our new domain is actually gonna be greater than or equal to negative five. But the domain refers to the x value, so we say x is gonna be greater than or equal to negative five. Now, if you were to reflect this over this line, y equals x, see if I fold it over that line, you can see this point is gonna end up here, and the graph's gonna look something like like that, okay? So that's our, our new domain, but how do we actually find the, the inverse? Well, we start with our basic function, three x squared minus five, we interchange the x and the y, okay? We wanna solve for the new y, so I'm gonna add five to both sides. It's a little bit more challenging problem. Divide everything by three, so this is gonna be uh, divided by three, divided by three. Now this is y squared, so we're gonna take the square root of both sides. Now you're probably saying, Mario, uh, when we take the square root, don't we get that plus or minus in there? Yes, that's true. But what's interesting is, see, 
when we take the square root, we get the positive or negative. But if we had plus or minus, we would actually have, this is like the positive uh, part of the graph. The negative part would be like, like over here. We don't want the negative one because of our domain restriction. So that we really only want the positive one in this case. Um, so it's, this is going to be your final, final result. So I would write it as f inverse of x equals square root of x plus 5 over 3. Now, say for example our domain, so you remember our original graph looked like this. Say our domain was x is less than or equal to 0. Then we'd be working with this branch right here, this left branch. And when you reflect this over the line at y equals x, uh, what would that look like? Well, that would look something like, uh, let's see if I can do a good uh, graph here for us. So that would look something like, um, like this, right? Yeah, like that. So you're folding it over. But you can see this graph here, it's below the x-axis. It's actually, that would be the, the negative one. So the negative reflects it over the x-axis. So you just want to basically pay attention to, when you look at your original function, find the domain and the range. And the reason you do that is because when you know the range of the original function, that will become your domain of your new function, your inverse function. So that wraps up this lesson. If you need to review, otherwise I'll see you in the next lesson.